Welcome back to Marquette Basketball Weekly. As the women prepare here at the Al McGuire Center for their game against Creighton, we sent reporter Donnie Dwyer down to the Bradley Center to see how the men are getting ready for their matchup with Grambling State. But first, Todd Warner takes a look back to see how the men broke the zone in their two previous games. As those are goes, so do the Golden Eagles. The senior forward poured in a career-high 28 points Tuesday night against the Maryland Eastern Shore. He was a key to the team's success as they went zone all game long. As you can see here, Lazar is so effective when he gets the ball at the free throw line. He's got a variety of moves that he can make. He can either pass the defenders or take it strong to the hoop, like he did right there with the jump hook. And now Lazar is also going to move without the ball. Against this zone defense, he's, he's going to sh not show where he's at, so the defense has to find him. He's going to put his hand up, as it's shown right here, going to get the ball, and he's going to make a strong move. He's got so many moves that the defender doesn't know what to, how to attack him, and offensively, Lazar dictates what the defender's going to do. One more time, Lazar Hayward is going to seal off his man, but this defender cannot double down. They have to watch out for Maurice Acker in the corner for the three ball. Lazar gets the ball, seals off his man, the jump hook. He's going old school on this one. And with all these moves down low, Lazar Hayward is going to again try to get in that spot, the sweet spot, right at the free throw line. But no, not this time. With the dribble drive penetration of the Golden Eagles, Lazar Hayward is out, is out to slip and makes that three pointer. Lazar Hayward's inside and outside game is so versatile, and that makes him one of the best players in the Big East. That's going to do it for this analyst segment of Marquette Basketball Weekly. I'm Todd Warner, MUTV Sports. Marquette welcomes Grambling State to the Bradley Center this Saturday. They also welcome back one of their own players. Yusuf Mbal plays first collegiate game after sitting out the first two because of NCAA suspension. Having him on the bench gives Buzz Williams a lot of options. Yeah, I'm, literally, I'm really excited to be here, become part of the team on Saturday so I can play and help them inside the core, offensive and defensively. And then the bench. You've been he's been doing a great job in practice. Uh, you know, getting getting the big guys better. Uh, you know, uh, by defending them. You know, uh, being able to their shots, been getting Chris a lot tougher. And I, I feel as though his world gonna be. You know, just coming in, giving us you know a spark off the bench by you know defending the big guys well, blocking shots, and uh, you know just finishing easy buckets. I'd like him to play. Uh, that'll be dependent upon how he does in practice today and tomorrow. Um, I think he can give us a different dimension than what we have. He's somewhat behind relative to game reps, but he was able to play against uh, Virginia in the scrimmage, and that helped him. Coach Buzz Williams said that this Grambling State team is much like an opponent they faced last season, and he's worried about his team crashing the boards. They play really hard. They rebound the ball like Texas Southern did last year. 26% of their points thus far have come from offensive rebounds. That, that scares me completely. Um, when we played uh, Texas Southern last year, they absolutely whipped us on the glass. And uh, we have some guys that hadn't been whipped like that yet. The guard play will be just as important to the team's success Saturday. Coach Williams said he's pleased with the efforts of his two senior point guards so far and announced a new player would be added to the backcourt next year. Brad Galley has more. On the last possible day for Buzz Williams to sign a recruit, he picked up Reggie Smith, a six-foot guard ranked 105th on rivals, and a player Buzz certainly likes. Really excited to add him. He's a great athlete, high major athlete, very fast. I think he's a change of pace guy. Uh, he's a really good kid. He wanted to be here. He's a tough kid. Uh, and I think he's a perfect complement to who we have returning, what we're losing, and what we, what we have also added in that class. Uh, in, in a lot of ways, I think he, he could end up being perfect. Um, time will tell as it all plays itself out, but we're, we're, we're grateful to have him. In discussing how the signing of Reggie finally came about, Buzz made an analogy for everyone to relate to. It's similar to all my responses relative to recruiting. It's, it's like getting married. When are, you, when are you ready to say I do? And when are you ready to propose? And I think anytime, every kid is specific, but you know, we did the home visit, he came to camp. Uh, he's been here multiple times on unofficial visits, plays for a great high school coach, uh, plays for arguably uh, one of the top AAU programs in the country. And there's a lot of different variables involved, but we had been recruiting him the whole time. Um, and we just kept, kept recruiting, uh, never knowing when the decision would be made. Smith will be an intricate part of next year's team, but as far as this year's squad goes, they'll be taking on Grambling State this Saturday before playing South Dakota. And although we'll be off for a week here at Marquette Basketball Weekly, the men will not be. They will be off to Florida for the Old Spice Classic where they will play three games before returning home. 
As the band prepares for what is always an entertaining show, we thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to this week's episode of Marquette Basketball Weekly. Please check out this episode and all of our post-game reaction to Marquette Basketball on our website at MUTVSports.com. For the crew and everyone who participated in making this show happen, I'm Brad Galley. Thanks for watching, Marquette. I don't like laser, but I gotta live with but see, it. See, that's not because that's not my name. When it's people different. when people see my name, it does not look like laser. <laughs> you, when you see Lazar spell L A Z A R, I, I just nickname. no. It came from somebody mispronouncing my name, and I just don't see how some people say laser. I mean, even in class, teachers when, still do that. Yes, when they when they're like if it's the first day and we're coming to class. And they're looking, you know, to see if everybody's in there. They're taking attendance. Yeah. It's Laser Hayward. And I just don't see how they see that. 